A very warm welcome to this rather different service of lessons and carols from St Paul's Parish Church, Constal. I must begin by offering my very grateful thanks to our musicians and readers, and particularly to Chris and Sylvia Knight, who have coordinated and enabled this project. The past year has been different and difficult for us all. And that fact makes it even more important for us to come together in whatever way we can this Christmas, to rejoice at the hope given to us all in God's gift of his only son. The holy child born in a stable to lowly parents and laid in a manger came to be one of us, to live alongside us, to share our sorrows and our joys. And since the day he was born in that small town of Bethlehem, he has never deserted us. Be assured, he has been at the bedside of each person who's suffered illness this year. He's been the strength found by the doctors and nurses to carry on when they've been exhausted. He's been the compassion demonstrated by the carers, and he's been the love and comfort offered to those who sadly have been bereaved. He's also been the inspiration that has guided the scientists and medics in their search and formulation of a vaccine which will ultimately change all of our lives once again for the better. And so please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks that through the wonder of technology and the talents of those from St Paul's Constal, we're able to join together to celebrate anew the coming of your kingdom. Through readings and carols, we hear revealed the mystery of your loving purpose for us, how that when we were far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. As we hear again the message of peace on earth and goodwill among us, all his people, we pray for the leaders of the nations at this difficult time. And that we may all be inspired to work together for the good of all, for justice, for freedom and for peace over the world. And we pray that we ourselves may always bear true witness to the comfort, joy and hope and in, in an all too often broken and divided world. Amen. And so in the words that Jesus himself taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And may the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting, now and always. Amen. Once
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Christ Jesus, being in very nature, God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. This is the word of the Lord. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns, listen. The watchmen lift up their voices, together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes, burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will be, lay bare his holy home in the sight of the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. 
In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at, these, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary said, How will this be, since I am a virgin? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mary replied, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. This is the word of the Lord. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was with child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling bands and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. When the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, and who lived under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive the full right of the children of God. Since you are God's children, God sent his spirit into your hearts, and the spirit cried out, Father, so now you are not a slave, you are God's child, and God will give you the blessing he promised. This is the word of the Lord.
walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And he will be called a wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no ends. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants, for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
has come for you to wake up from your slumber, because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. This is the word of the Lord. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. There were shepherds abiding in the fields near Bethlehem, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord suddenly appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were frightened. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling bands, lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. This is the word of the Lord.
Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod. Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. They saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. This is the word of the Lord. The oracle of one whose eyes see clearly. The oracle of one who hears the words of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate and whose eyes are opened. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. And the life was the light of all people. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light, the true light that enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, 
and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
Thank you.